And our next presentation and the last presentation for our day is Advocacy and You. And our very own Mark Fisher, who is the Advocacy Engagement Manager at the Muscular Dystrophy Association, is going to be our presenter. In this role, Mark leads MDA's grassroots program and advocacy volunteer efforts. He works to empower advocates and connect them with key decision makers in order to advance public policies that improve the lives of the neuromuscular disease community. He previously served as the Digital Grassroots Manager at the American Heart Association and was also a field organizer on the U.S. Senate campaign. So Mark earned his Master's of Public Policy from American University and is originally from Pittsburgh. So thank you, Mark, for being here. I know you're not in the office this weekend, so thanks for, for helping us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, hopefully, the I'm in a hotel, so hopefully the connection <laughs> holds up. So if it doesn't, we'll go with plan B. Uh, That's but good. Th yes, thank you so much for having me. Let me just pull up my presentation real quick. and. Um, we will get going. Awesome. So yeah, thank you for that kind introduction. Uh, my name is Mark Fisher. I'm the Advocacy Engagement Manager here at MDA. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I know I am the, the, the last batter in the order, so I really appreciate everyone sticking around and hopefully, um, um, hopefully you'll be able to join our grassroots team once I'm getting done. So let's chat a little bit of what I'll be talking about. One is the uh, overview of MDA's advocacy program. So what issues do we advocate on and why? Uh, and then I'll go into newborn screening, uh, which is one of our largest issues that we uh, have advocates advocate on the newborn screening program. So I'll go into a little bit into that and why it's so important. And then talk about two quick, uh, two bills that are currently up right now in Congress that uh, deal with a newborn screening program that we really hope to get um, over the finish line this year, and then how you can join us. And I hope everyone on this call uh, will join us in those efforts. So first, here's a little bit about the the program, the uh, issues we advocate on here at MDA. We have uh, we divide them into three buckets. So the first is access to care and therapies from day one, and that is uh, really where the newborn screening program falls. So being able to, to detect conditions right when uh, a baby is born and then get them the treatment immediately. Uh, so that falls in that first bucket, but also genetic testing and genetic counseling. And then the second main issue under that bucket is access to affordable and quality healthcare. So I know we just had a healthcare and insurance presentation. So uh, we do lots of work in making sure that uh, our community has uh, the care they need, that it's affordable and that's accessible to them um, from the minute they're born. So those are the two big issues in that in that category. The second category is accelerating therapeutic development. This is us working with the agencies such as the Food and Drug Administration, Health and Human Services, and making sure that they hear from the neuromuscular disease community to make sure that they are prioritizing therapeutics that'd be really helpful for the community. And not only that, making sure that they're developed them quickly, but also in a way that they're effective. So that's our work to make sure that things like vaccines, which I know is very uh, in the news right now, but other therapies and drugs come out quickly, but also are um, beneficial to the community. And then the last one is empowerment and independence. Uh, and this is uh, a topic that when we survey the, the neuromuscular disease community, this is probably their number one um, challenge they face is, is especially travel with air and airline travel. That's the number one issue. And we are working both legislatively and with the airlines to try to make uh, traveling more accessible. Um, that's probably the number one issue that we hear uh, uh, time and time again, and it's one of our main priorities. And then also making sure folks, um, employers uh, don't discriminate against the community and, and making sure that their, their employment rights are, are met. So we do a lot of employment issues as well. So those are our three main uh, issue buckets that we work on. But now the newborn screening program, which is what I wanted to focus on today. Um, it's one of our main top issues that we, that we work on. And so what is newborn screening? It's a simple blood spot test given right after a baby is born. So as soon as a baby is born, they'll do a simple blood test and then they'll take that and they will screen for a whole variety of conditions. Um, Many, and, and two of those are under uh, MDA's umbrella, which are SMA and then Pompe disease. So they'll take that blood spot and, and, and run it through tests to try to detect if a baby has one of these conditions. And if they, they feel like they do, they'll go to further tests to confirm the diagnosis. But this is really important because we know that there are better outcomes when babies are caught early and they're, and they're detected early. 
So especially with SMA, with some of the amazing treatments that are out there, the earlier that we can detect that uh, someone might have that condition, the, uh, the better their outcomes will be. So it's really important that the newborn screening program is um, up and running and then it works properly so we can keep detecting these conditions early and that will lead to much better outcomes for babies and uh, going forward. So how does the newborn screening program work? It's one of the few programs we work on that, that has both a federal and state component. It's definitely a federal and state uh, combination program. At the federal level, the federal um, the agencies uh, will recommend uh, certain conditions to be screened and they also, the federal government does uh, provide some funding for that to happen as well. But really the programs are administered at the state by level, state by state level. So a program in California is going to look much different than a program in Montana, which will look, look a lot different than a program in Florida. Every state's newborn screening program is different and they, they, uh, they include different uh, conditions in their program. So um, I'll show you a map in a minute, but currently uh, 28 states currently screen for SMA, uh, even though the federal government has recommended that be one that all states screen for. Again, it's up to each state to decide what, what conditions they screen for and what conditions they do not screen for. So if we look at the federal map right now, uh, it's, a, it's a very colorful map. Um, you can see that as I said, every state is all over the place in, in terms of what they screen for. Again, the good news is 28 states screen for SMA and Pompeii, uh, sorry, SMA uh, only, and a few states screen for Pompeii only, and a few states screen for all of them. Um, so if I would have showed you this map in the spring, it would have been a lot less colorful. Uh, over the last few months, we've seen a lot of states uh, actually implement SMA screening. So those are the pink states that do SMA only. Um, and we've seen a lot of states do both SMA and Pompeii, which those are the gold states. So as you can see, to get our goal to have all 50 states in the District of Columbia to screen for SMA, we have to do this at the state by state by state level. Uh, so it takes some time, but we are making progress. Again, if I would have showed you this just a few months ago, there'd be a lot fewer states that didn't have any colors on them. So we are making progress um, in our goal to make sure that all states screen for conditions, especially uh, SMA. So that's kind of the work we're doing on the, on the, on the state level. Uh, at the federal level, there are two bills that are really important right now. One is funding the newborn screening program. So uh, as Congress tries to figure out what their budgets are going to be for next year, we need to make sure that they, in fact, uh, fund the newborn screening program. So uh, we just, uh, they need to make sure that they are giving it the proper funding so we can continue the great work that the program does. But also, uh, we need to make sure that the program is also reauthorized. This is kind of a weird Washington quirk, but technically right now the newborn screening program is it, it's not reauthorized. It, it, the authorization has lapsed. That doesn't mean that the program's not happening. As I said, it, it's a state, it's run state by state. So screenings are still happening for SMA. They're still happening for a Pompeii. Um, but technically the program's not reauthorized, which means we can't improve upon it. That means it's hard to add new conditions to it. Um, so we really need to make sure that they reauthorize that, and that's going to be through the Newborn Screening Saves Lives Reauthorization Act. The good news is it passed the House unanimously this year, uh, in 2019, but unfortunately it's just stuck in the Senate. So we're really hoping that in the next month uh, before the Congress uh, retires that they will uh, properly reauthorize the program so we can continue to improve it and add some more conditions to it. And you can see on the right, uh, the picture there, we brought advocates in. Uh, this is obviously before the pandemic hit. Uh, we brought uh, a bunch of advocates to DC to, to lobby their lawmakers to do just that, to finally, to reauthorize this program once and for all. So uh, that's just an example of some of the things our amazing advocates do. Uh, we do bring them into DC uh, when we can. We've had to switch that to virtual, obviously, but we do have them contact our lawmakers face-to-face -face or over a video screen. Uh, to advocate on issues like the newborn screening program. So those are the two uh, things we're working on right now that we really need some help with. So, you know, as I wrap here, up here, I really encourage anyone if they're interested to, to join our network, join our grassroots network, uh, you can do that in two ways. You can go to mda.org slash advocacy and sign up right there. Also, when you go to that site, you can see all the other issues that we advocate on that I talked about in that earlier slide in addition to newborn screening. But if you sign up there, um, you'll get all, all our email lists, which will then send you relevant action alerts about 
the newborn screening program. Um, it'll tell you how you can contact your lawmaker via email or via phone or when we have um, those virtual visits, uh, virtual Hill Day visits, which we are going to do uh, in the spring, how you can get involved with that. We really need your help because lawmakers do listen to their constituents and when they hear their constituents telling them to please support this program, they will act. So we do need your help. And the good thing is our site makes it easy for you. So if you join our site and you want to then email your member of Congress on the newborn screening program, we will match you to your lawmaker automatically. So you, if you're not sure who it is, especially with the, the new Congress coming in, maybe you're not not sure if you're your old congressperson one or not maybe you have a new one uh, we will uh, make sure that you you're sending it to your your in fact the person who represents you so please go to our site and join us you can also text mda usa to um, 50457 and that will also get you on our list so we have two ways you can either go to mda.org advocacy or you can text mda usa to 50457 those are two easy ways for us to join us and the good news, there's something for everyone if you want to become an advocate. Again, you can email your lawmakers, you can call your lawmakers, you can have, you can do virtual visits with your lawmakers, but we also have educational webinars similar to this where we go over some key uh, issues, whether it's um, some of those, those FDA issues I was talking about and vaccine development, or maybe how to become an, a better advocate. We have a few training series as well. So if you're interested, just please sign up and uh, we'll get you connected. Uh, but with that, I know that we are running a little over in time, so that is all I had. Uh, you can always email me at the at mfisher at mdausa.org if you just want to chat. I'm happy to do that. Or um, if you want to learn more, please uh, email me, and I'm happy to to talk with you. So with that, I, if there's any questions, I'll gladly take them. But if not, um, that's uh, that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. We don't have any questions, but I know people are going to, um, we can, we'll um, send this also. Um, it'll part, be part of our recording. So thank you very much for taking time out this afternoon or this evening on, on your long weekend and your no vacation, problem. I should say. I know. No problem. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> okay. If you have any but, questions, feel free to email me. I'll gladly chat with anybody. All right. Thank you, Mark, very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.